I definitely understand being lonely. I definitely understand isolation. But I cannot say that I have ever befriended a slug. I've dated a few, but I never befriended one. But hey, let's read the article. I was so lonely in my marriage that I befriended a slug that lived in a potted plant. The loneliest I have ever been. I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown and on the verge of divorce when my mother gave me a potted plant. My husband and I were sleeping in separate bedrooms that time, and my beloved dog had firmly taken up residence in the other room. I envied my husband so much because my precious dog loved him more than she loved me. I missed her gently snoring pre- <laughs> I missed her gently snoring presence on my pillow more than words can say. Whew. If I'd been smarter, she should just stop there. Had I been smarter, that should be the first sentence. Had I been smarter, I would have realized that our marriage was doomed from the start. My husband was a stereotypical user and abuser. He openly took on girlfriends, he abused drugs, and drank too much, and that wasn't the worst of it. My parents urged me to leave him, but I didn't want to admit failure. I was committed to the marriage. Well, not this marriage in particular as much as the concept of marriage in general. And I figured I'd make it work or die trying. Who are we turning into, 50 Cent? Anyway, okay, when my parents purchased a new bedroom set for their home. Wow, that was a long pause. Let me try that again. When my parents purchased a new bedroom set for their home, I accepted their mattress and set it up across the hallway from the bedroom I shared with my husband since we bought our own home three years earlier. He'd frequently force me to sleep on the floor anyhow, so he wouldn't miss me in the master bedroom. I love sleeping alone again, although I would have made room for my dog. There was no one trying to push me out of the bedroom or elbowing my ribs if I snored in my sleep. My bedroom was sunny and bright. I kept the windows open to let in the fresh air and sunshine. The only furniture in the room was the bed and an old wooden bookcase we found in the garage when we moved into the house. My mother bought me gauzy curtains, excuse me, gauzy blue curtains for my windows and she gave me a massive potted plant in a plastic tub that I placed atop the old wooden bookshelf beside my bed. I was still trapped in a hateful marriage with a hateful man, but I had my own little oasis in the desert. See, that's sad. That's a definite abuse cycle. And then you start to uh, try to retreat inward into a mental world and avoid a mental ward. If I wasn't so lonely and terrified, I could almost have been happy. The morning after placing my newly acquired potted plant onto the shelf adjacent to my bed, I woke up to the sunlight flooding my room. Outside, it was a beautiful day, and I opened my eyes. There was a slug on the side of the flower. Sounds like she was dating one of them motherfuckers, too. There was a slug on the side of the flower pot. It had crawled up from somewhere within my plant or its soil and was parked on the plastic pot halfway from the top. Suddenly, I didn't feel so lonely. There was another living creature in the room. No offense to the potted plant, or the slug, one that had a heartbeat and maybe even a soul. Yay, yay, a lost soul. My new friend showed up every morning before I woke. He was there on the side of the plastic pot before I opened my eyes each day. While I was at work, he would retreat back into the safety of the potted plant until sometime before dawn when he would emerge again to help me by greeting the morning. The slug and I lived in perfect harmony, not like with her husband, for months. I looked for him the moment I opened my eyes and I missed him when he tucked away for the night. I loved him. In the same way that I had loved canaries and cats I had as a child. See how far she's mentally retreated, you guys, to her childhood. 
see what, what abuse will do to you. I hope you guys are catching the messages in this. I loved him the way I loved the traitorous dog sleeping across the hallway, curled up against my beating husband's back. <coughs> I bet she wished she was beating on his motherfucking back. It wasn't long before my husband and I called it quits on our marriage. When I moved out of the house, I left behind all of my furniture, my vinyl records, my clothing, my shoes, and my potted plant. When I returned to the house to retrieve my belongings, I discovered that my husband had changed the locks. I replaced my clothing with secondhand jeans and a t-shirt from, from the charity shop. I replaced my records with CDs. My mother bought me a new potted plant, but it took a long time before I stopped missing my pet slug. There was a time when he was the only friend I had in the world. He could not be replaced. Wow. Things that you're forced into, the desperate situations people are forced into when in abusive relationships, when you mentally isolate yourself and when you're so far removed that the only thing you can relate to is a slug. When you're living with a slimy slug and a traitorous dog and then you befriend the opposite slug. Okay, anyway... Pray for this lady.